The Social Dilemma, a documentary film by Netflix, deals with the abuse of social media and tech companies. One of the arguments that the experts and former employees of these companies presented in the film is that they use the data of their users in order to target them with specific ads. This means that they make their profit by manipulating their users and controlling their behaviors and habits in order to predict what they will want to buy. The issue with this argument is that these attitudes and tactics are not new at all. In the past, enlightened men already valued certainty, stability, and safety in order to keep the new emerging commercial society going. Using computer algorithms in social media and search engine platforms is the most optimal social engineering design of the last few hundred years. But in a modern state, it is not only the government and the business community that seeks certainty and stability, but also the citizens. The modern state legislates laws that are meant to protect their citizens and gain their trust. This is the reason why in their personal lives, the citizens need to be able to predict what will happen to them, to know what to expect and plan their financials in order to give back to the state for its services, that is to pay taxes and consume goods in order to keep the economy alive. Technology companies help to maintain law and order by tracking the data of their users and reminding them what they need and want or who they are and always were and as such make their lives more intuitive and harmonious and surveillance technologies help the state to protect the citizens to keep their part of the deal they made with the citizens by tracking down suspects of illegal activities and monitoring public spaces they help to sustain the trust between the citizens and the government. Those who want to protect democracy by demanding to limit corporations and tech companies like author Shoshana Zuboff fail to understand that they serve the interest of both the state and the citizens. Western democracies then incorporate non-liberal practices and ideas since some individuals find freedom in knowing that they were chosen to be the way they are and act in a certain way, even though they were manipulated and led into believing it. Moreover, they are more willing to give away their freedom out of fear and not in the name of progressive ideas. Another reason people are willing to give away their agency to tech and social media companies is that they want to have a childlike experience once again. That is, they are willing to obey their authority in order to be allowed to have more time to play all day with their screens and to be noticed and seen by other users. But these companies need to be careful. If their algorithms will be able to predict the future perfectly to the point that human beings will be just cogs in a machine, there will be a revolt against them, as in the third season of Westworld, a show by HBO. Another option is that they will go out of business if the citizens will stop being consumers, or better yet, users. This is a problem for them, since not only can they not afford to lose users, but they constantly need to add more users in order to show potential investors and advertisers that they are constantly growing. This is the reason why politician Andrew Yang, for example, is pushing for universal income. He knows that in the future, a lot of jobs will be gone and that robots will replace human workers since the neoliberal system that helped to create all these tech companies is here to stay. People in Silicon Valley know that if the instability in society will grow, it will be bad for business and we might even see a push from them to go back to a social state. As author David Harvey argues in his book Marx, Capital and the Madness of Economic Reason. But they might decide to go the other way around and make the citizens more and more dependent on online platforms in order to earn a living, to the point that not only will they not be able to delete the social media accounts, as the author 
Jerome Lanier recommends they do, but they won't be able to be offline at all. This will create more and more upheavals, since as the interviewers in the Social Dilemma documentary film argue, the survival of these companies comes at the expense of the survival of the planet and Western democracies. But if human life will be unbearable, only a few will see these dystopian visions come true, since the global natality rate will drop drastically. At some point, Silicon Valley probably will create a society of robots. In the new states, Amazon will build all around the world for those who, in spite of all the suffering human beings will have to endure, will decide to procreate, that is, for the rich and the religious fanatics. But perhaps that's not the worst that could happen. The tech mogul, Elon Musk, and author Yuval Noah Harari pushed to artificially alter our consciousness so we won't be sad, lazy, stupid, or crazy, but happy consumers, efficient workers, and good tax-paying citizens. Even if life on Earth will be unbearable, if that will come to fruition, it will be the most sophisticated type of slavery humanity will ever experience. But there is also hope on the horizon. In the future, we ourselves might be able to get uploaded to a cloud after we die on Earth. This is the premise of Upload, a show by Amazon Studios. In the future, we might choose to die, since it will be cheaper and safer up in the cloud heaven. A thousand years on a cloud will cost the same as one year on by a then unlivable earth. Instead of leaving their inheritance to their loved ones, people will take their money to the grave in order to live forever. That will be their afterlife reward for being good social media users and workers. But they won't really live forever since the awareness of their mortality will still linger with them infinitely. Which means that they will become depressed angels who consume cheap goods and buy services aimlessly. 